hi my name is precious peculiar and you're welcome back to my youtube channel in case you're just meeting me for the first time nice to meet you my name is precious peculiar and on my youtube channel i talk about faith purpose significance i talk about jesus christ i talk about how to become the person that god has destined and called you to be so if you've been following me on my channel for a while you know that we're doing a series titled a man called by god a man called by god and we're in part three of that series so today's topic in part three of a man called by god is sacrifice 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 part one we talked about separation part two we talked about surrender and part three today we're talking about sacrifice god has a lot to teach us today there's so much that that our eyes need to be open to and i pray god that as you watch this video that you will not remain the same in jesus name so get your notes get your pens and let's learn together from the throne of grace sacrifice a man called by god sacrifice part three what exactly is sacrifice what exactly is sacrifice sacrifice means to lay something down sacrifice means to not just something do not just lay just anything but something precious sacrifice means to lay something precious down it means to surrender i won't say that word again because that was that was last week's topic but surrender it means to lay something down something that is precious it means to like drop it and like let it go to drop something that is precious something that is valuable to let it go for something greater you sacrifice something for something you sacrifice something for something right you sacrifice something that is valuable to get an even more valuable and even more precious thing so now Characteristics of a man called by God. Sacrifice is one of them. Sacrifice, sacrifice is one of them. And I want you guys to know that this thing is in maybe no particular order. I won't say that that you should consider your your sacrifice more than your surrender. Although sacrifice and surrender are are like I won't say they are totally synonymous, but they are closely related, right? So this series, because this one is part three now, so I don't want you to think that ah, this one is not as important as the first one. No 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 everything is necessary everything is important so let's go right sacrifice sacrifice the backbone of christianity is actually sacrifice the backbone of christianity is sacrifice how did how did god give he gave sacrificially why would we say that god giving jesus christ his son was a sacrifice well, because that was his only son as we had in that son on earth or in pluto or venus we know that in uh, then he had another one maybe that's why he could just let go of one he could he could consider giving out one but he had just one just one he didn't have extra he didn't have extra god didn't have another son he just had one son and that was what he gave on our behalf that was what he gave for us that was what he gave for us he gave his son to get us god gave his son to get us that is sacrifice that is sacrifice a person called by God must be willing to sacrifice. Everybody gives now, one way or the other. You shall give something, even whether you wanted to give or not. You might, you might shall give, shall. But as a person called by God, your giving cannot be ordinary. Your giving cannot be ordinary. Your giving inside that giving, there must be sacrifice and be giving. So you don't give because you have ten and you can afford to let go of one. If you have just one, you give that one. If you have just one, you give that one. Your life is not your own. Your life is not your own. And as a person that has been called by God, you need to understand that in a, in a, in a greater depth. Your life is not your own. What you have is not your own. If God did not give you, you won't have it. Right? If God did not give you, you won't have it. So if God wakes up today and asks you for that thing, why should you have problem giving it? Why should you have issues giving it? Everything is sacrifice. It is still going to be sacrificial because we are human beings now. We like the the feeling of possession. We like the feeling that we own something, we have something. But in this work with God, God will take you to a point where you have 
you have nothing like he will take it to a point where you are totally dependent on him everything you had before like you realize that you don't have it again everything you thought you were everything you thought you are you see that it's no more there again everything you thought you had you see that it's no more there again and god removes all those things god makes you surrender god makes you sacrifice and let some things go god allows things to be stripped off you god allows you to to, to encounter some disappointment for where he's taking you to sacrifice some things have to go you must sacrifice let me okay let me mention the things that you sacrifice common things first of all before we get into the the patterns you sacrifice your time as a person called by god you sacrifice your time the time is not even your own god gave it to you you should never call, you should never be so full of yourself that you get to a point where God asks you for something that you can't give. He gave it to you in the first place. So you, so you should not have a problem giving it to him. He gave it to you in the first place. So you should not have a problem giving it to him. Because he gave it to you in the first place. It's for, it's for him. If he didn't give it to you, you won't have it. So you won't have mouth to be complain and say ah but god can you can you come are you sure i'm not i don't want to uh, you you won't have, won't have the mouth sacrifice you must be willing to sacrifice you must be willing to sacrifice there are some people that god will forcefully take things for them so he can teach them some things some people god is forcefully strip you of some characters you forcefully remove some things from your life because he wants to train you. So other people, you might not be so, I don't want to use the word lucky. It's not, it's not, it's not, it should not be a strive. It should not be hard. If it's hard for you, it's going, it's going to be, okay, ah, God, how do I put this? It's hard. It's, not, it's hard, but it's not hard. It will not be hard because you know the person you are giving it to. My boy, my best scriptures in Philippians 1 verse 6 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. The first Timothy one verse two. This is the confidence I have in my God that He that has begun a good work in my life from the beginning has the capability to carry it on to the end when it is completed. And for this cause, I'm not ashamed. Why? Because I know the one I've believed in, and I know that He's able to take care of what I've put in His hands till the day I need it back. He's able to take all that I've put in His hands. It's His own. So if He's asking for it, why should I have a problem giving it? God will not strive with you. He asks you for something you are complaining from today to yesterday. <laughs> you are complaining from today to tomorrow. You just leave you like you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. For those that feel they have already been called by God and are kind of like just waiting for more instructions and all of that. This is something you need to start preparing yourself in. Be willing to let anything go. Like, sit down with yourself. Like, look at, should I say, all your possessions. Look at all that you have. Look at all that you have. All your accomplishments. And be like, and look at them. And, and, and start looking at them. Like, start, start analyzing that. Which one can I not give? If there's something now that I will not be able to give to God when he asks for, asks for it, I might as well start giving it out. Like I might, I might as well find a strategy to detach myself from that thing because I will not let a thing be what is hindering the way God is using me. I will not let a thing or even a person or, or money or accomplishment or fame or, or whatever, popularity, hinder the flow, hinder the way in that the, the 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 dimension at which god wants to use me i will not let it happen so sit with yourself now and start removing start stripping yourself start praying to god if it's something you know that you are so attached to start praying to god father deliver me from this don't let me ever get to a point that i can't give you this if you ask me for it don't let me ever get to a point that I can't give you the money you are giving me, Lord. Don't let me ever get to a point that I can't, that I can't give you the finances, that I can't give you the time you gave me. That I can't, after, you, that after you have given me all this responsibility and all this fame and all this world, that I can't give you my time. That I can't give you at least two hours, 40 minutes of my day, which is a tight of the time you have given me. Let me ever get to that point to start praying, start praying and sincerely mean it. Because trying times will come. Times will come when God will ask you for some things. I'll be like, God, but how <laughs> Oh, God. Start preparing yourself now. Because that time will surely come. That time will surely come. So start preparing yourself now. Start preparing yourself now. God, is there anything I can't give you? 
God, please open my eyes to it. And there might be some things that you feel that, ah, but what's there now? I can give God. But until he shock you, God will use it and shock you that he will ask you for it and you realize that you failed the test. And actually, at first, God knew that my son is not going to give me this, but let me just try. And let me also show him that he will waver. That he will waver and he will doubt and he will double mind for a while, even if he eventually gives me. Because the timing at which you do things is also very important. God might have asked you for something in 2018, but you're just getting the mind to give him now in 2021. Is this still like, is this still relevant? I already feel the test though. Prompt obedience, sharp obedience. If it says lay it down, lay it down. If it says drop it, drop it. There's some things that, and there's almost there are also some things that God might have been the one that 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 told you to start it in the first place, and you become so attached to it, and you become so you become, you just love it. You just you know you know the scripture in Matthew six verse twenty two. That's where where your treasure is, your heart to be also. Treasure is things that are valuable, things that are precious to you. Your money, your whatever it might be precious to you your heart is already there and god might see that ah the way this this my son the way it's going with this thing don't let him now come and not now be able to serve me because of this thing i gave me i will remove it i will cut it off i will separate him from it so maybe things that god has told you to do before things that god has, has given you before and he might tell you to stop take a step back take a step back God might tell you to start a business, but you might, might not become so attached to it. Not even in a bad way, but it's just that your heart is there because you have sacrificed into it, you have invested into it, you have put a lot into it, your money, your time, your, your resources, you have put a lot into it. And God might tell you to withdraw, to not sacrifice it again. And your heart is there so much. It takes a heart that, that trusts and loves God. Because some people, when they hear that, they say, ah, that can't be God. No, no, no. It's the devil. How can God tell me this multi-million dollar business? He tells me, how can he tell me to shut it down? <laughs> My dear, it can be God, though. It can be God. Is it not God that gave Abraham Isaac? Is it not God that gave Isaac to Abraham? The same God requested Isaac from Abraham. It was a test. It was a test. I don't think God really intended to hurt Isaac because he has said before that your, your, this your seed. It is from it is from Isaac. I want your seed to be to be multiplied on the earth, not Ishmael, not Ishmael. It is from Isaac that I want your seed to multiply on the earth. It is from Isaac. God can still say, God can still ask for it, but it's a, it is a test. Don't fail your tests in the kingdom of God. Don't fail your tests. It's a school. We're in the school of purpose. Don't fail your tests. Don't fail your exams. There's something I've noticed that even in my life, when you say something, God will test you on it. When I say that God saying eh, this whole semester, I'm just going to serve you. I'm just going to give you my all. I'll never miss fellowship. I will never do this. Then tests will start coming. Like trials will start coming. Or even if your uh, your 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 school test when I start clashing with some things, and God will be like, which one will you choose? You told me. You choose me. You told me you will pick me. So why are we getting to this point and you are you are already double minded? You are already saying, eh, but God, you you know now. And eh, we have an exam. I have to read. Can you can you come? Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Whatever you say, God will test this. You say that God, this year I'm not going to do this thing again. Temptation will come. God will test you. To see whether you're just talking from your mouth or your, or your heart or talking from your from your back because <laughs> God will test you as a person that is called by God. God will test you. God wants to see that, my son, even if I tell you to stand on air, you will stand. Even if I take away everything that I've given you, you will still stand and you will still choose me. Because some people have taken material possessions above God. But it's God that gave me now. But God can take it away. They forget that what God gives, He can also take away. He can also take away. He can also take away. 
It's very important that God, God wants to see that heart of trust. Like the trust must be dead, it must be standing, not shaking trust, not trust that when wind blows it will shift. Trust that is standing, trust that is firm in God and in His word and in His love for you. I trust that is firm in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. That I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts of good, thoughts to prosper you and not to give you an expected end and, and to give you an expected end. Thought to give you an expected end. The thing with sacrifice is that when you give God something, you have not actually lost it. It might leave your hand, but it has not left your life. It might leave your hand, but it has not left your life. It might leave your hand, but it has not left your life. Because it will come back to you. That scripture I go to, let me quote it again. Philippa 1 verse 6, this is the confidence I have in my God. That he that has begun a good work in my life from the beginning has the capability to carry it on to the end when it is completed. And for this course, I'm not ashamed. This is 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. Because I know the one I've believed in. And I know that he's able to take care of what I've put in his hands to the day I need it back. As I've given him like this, he will give me back. It will return to me. It will return to me. It might have left my hand, but it has not left my life. Sacrifice. Laying it all bare. Laying it all down. Whatever you might have used 10 years to accomplish, if God tells you, drop it. Turn your back from it. Would you think twice? Or would you, would you do it on the spot? Would you think twice? Would you start doubting and start saying, eh, but... Oh, all my life's work all my life's work <sighs> same way I was also thinking that ah, this medicine that I'm studying like this so all the 6 years of struggle <laughs> all the 6 years of, of, of reading and jacking and dying and re-resurrecting -re after all the years God told me, you're going to keep that certificate somewhere. You're not using it. Like, you're not using it. What will you do? What will you do? Sacrifice. God wants to know where we have placed him in our hearts. He wants to know where we stand. Where he stands in our lives. Because some people just want to be called by God for the fame. They don't want to be called by God to, to, to let him mold them and to let him, to, 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 to let him just envelop their lives and change their character and change their being. Because part of the things we talk about on this YouTube channel, Precious Peculiar, is becoming the person that God wants you to become. Becoming the person that God wants you to become. It's not just about doing See, that sacrifice, that doing will be hard when you have not yet come from a place of doing. You should, if you, you can't force your doing, you can't, it's, it's going to be hard to sacrifice and let some things go. You can't force your doing when you have, when you have not yet fixed your being. You must first be the person, ah, you must walk with God first. That's when sacrifice will be easy. That's when you know that, that's when you'll be sure that God is not playing me, God is not duping me, God is not using me to play ball. It first starts from a place of being. When you be with God, when you learn from God, when you walk with God, before you start to walk for God. Because that day, that, those days of sacrifice, they will come. It's one, so that God might never ask you. I say, you will forcefully strip it off your life. You wake up and realize that it's there no more. God has never God loves you so much, he will never ask you, he will just take it. He will take it so he can teach you. Because there's no time for arguments. Because some people can argue, some believers, they should be they should have been lawyers. So. <laughs> if law was a religion, that's where they'll be. Because they like to argue. Argue with God. Argue, argue, argument. Part of being called by God is surrendering your will, like we talked about last week. Surrendering your will. You are subject to God. Like before you do anything, you ask. Before, before anything happens, you must have so, sought his face concerning it. Because you're not just an ordinary person. You are not normal. 
Like I said in the in the first video on separation, you are not normal. You are not like everybody. You are not like everybody. The things you will go through will be tougher. They will be harder. They will be more bitter. And the joy at the end will be greater than than, than others. Because you are not living for yourself. You are living for God. You are not living for yourself. I have a video on that. Your purpose is not about you. Your life is not about you. It's about the impact that God wants to. It's about the testimony. It's about the story that God is writing with your life. It's about the words God is using to describe your life. It's about the legacy he wants to leave for you and your generations. It's about what he wants to use. To, to, it's about the sign he wants to show through your life, through your generation. That's why you can't just compare yourself to anybody. That's why you can't just compare yourself to unbelievers. He that does so is not wise. Because that person has not come to an understanding that I am different. I am called by God. A person that is called is separated. A person that is called is separated. Thank you, Father. Let me give you a scenario of when, like, imagine four children are standing and one of them is called. What does that one do? That first of all, that one does what? The person has been called. He first says, he first responds. Right? He responds. After responding, he starts to move forward. The other three people, do they respond? No. Do they start to move forward? No. Simple difference between someone that is called and someone that is not called. It will require more from you. It will require you raising your hand and saying yes, sir. It will require you moving your feet and, and, and walking as to what going to where you are, you are you, to where the person that called you is, first of all. Going to God in prayer, going to God in worship, going to God and asking him for instructions. It will require you going to God. After you have, been, after you have, come, you have, you have gotten the instructions, it will require you stepping out to go and do the thing that you have been called to do. Imagine it as a normal errand. Imagine it as a normal errand. If they sent if they sent me on errand and, and, and send me on an errand, they did not send my younger one on an errand. Will I be playing with the younger one? When I know that when I know that we're gonna know that when my parents come back, they're going to shout at me for not doing my for not carrying out what, what I was called to carry out. Will I not be playing with my younger ones that did not send to do anything? This is not trying to say that we should should um see people are treat people like trash and anybody that is that does not have that's not the ministry gives and just push them aside no that's this not that, that's not what i'm saying not so but there's a different lesson so there's a different sense of responsibility there's a there's a different belief there's a different posture you carry as someone has been called and you must understand this you know you'll be frustrated so the world frustrates you. The world you are meant to deliver and, 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 and show them the way to God. They, 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 it, will, it will choke you. You must have that understanding. There's a difference. I am different. I'm not like the world. I'm not like everybody. I'm not like an average person walking on the street. As a medical student, I'm not a normal medical student. I'm not just a student. I'm not, I'm not just a law student. I'm not just day. I am not normal. And I can't be normal. I can't be normal, normal in my thinking. You're supposed to be stretched. Nobody becomes great being ordinary. You can't just be... You can, ah, To even succeed in the call and do it well, your mind must be there. If they send me to go and buy recharge because they send me to go and do something. That was those days when we went to buy recharge card. Now, everybody does. Yes, that's the code. But I remember clearly, when I was young, if they send me on an errand to go and buy something like a charge card, buy bread or something, buy buy water. If my mind is not there, I might forget. In fact, I'll be already be walking on the road. And I'm not saying, hey, what did my mommy say again? Like I've forgotten. I'm not sitting and start thinking. Sometimes I'll just start crying. I've entered. <laughs> How could I forget? And if I go after that, I'll, I'll receive the of my life. <laughs> you must be focused. When they send you, don't have to start interacting with everybody on the road. You will forget why you are called. You will forget why you were called. You will even forget the person that called you. Actually, was it your mommy or dad or your aunt or your grandma? You say, ah, I don't even know who sent me. Tell someone in the house. Ragarabosha. Simply, these are simple examples I'm using. You must be focused. As a person called by God, you are not normal. 
It will require more from you than other people. Your time will be taken more. Things you sacrifice, you sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your money. When other people are spending money to buy clothes, you're spending money to buy books. When other people are spending money to buy food. You'll be spending money on other things. You'll be investing money in the kingdom. When other people are spending money and playing and lavishing things. You'll be spending money, you'll be investing in the kingdom. You'll be sowing seeds because you know where you are going. Because you know what you have been called to. Because you know the God that sent you. And you're done, you don't want to disappoint him. But some people are okay with God being disappointed in them. He does not choke them, he does not move them. They'll be like, hey, but ah, such is life. Such is life. Really. I pray that God changes this conditioning. Because it's the people that God has separated, separated out of the world and now want to be like the world. The people that God has separated from the world and want now want to be like the world. God called you out for a reason. First Peter 2 verse 9. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Called to show forth the praises of him that has called you out. Of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called out. So please tell me why do you still want to do things that the people have not been called? Why do you still want to do things like the people that are still <sighs> change your mindset? Change your mindset. You can't eat your cake and have it. You can't want to serve God with everything you have and still you know be putting another leg. Inside the things of the world, the world you are meant to change, you start conforming to them, then they just start laughing at you because they'll be like, This one doesn't know what they are doing. Do you think the people of the world are, are, are stupid? They know what they are doing with these trends, with these things that become popular here, and they, they know what they are doing, they know what they are trying to do in the hearts of children of God, they know what they are trying to do in the, in the hearts of people that have not even yet known Christ, they know what they are doing, and they have their strategies planned out. But you, you will not focus, you will not plan. You will not pray. You will not plan with God. You will not pray with God. You will not ask God for what to do. <laughs> and sometimes, when I start talking like this, it seems as if I'm shouting too much. People literally tell me that, Pekila, calm down now. Calm down. Eh, we understand. Who, ang- who is angering you? Who is angering you? Why are you so... Uh, why? Like, calm down, reduce it. Calm down, small, small. Cha, cha, be doing it small, small. There's an issue in this thing because the problem is that most people that want to be called, that won't go to call them into ministry. People that won't go to call them into ministry, into um, into service, into you know big names, be a big name in the kingdom of God. They want that, but they don't want God. They want that, but they don't want God. What do I mean? See, when God calls a man, there are two dimensions of the call of God. When God calls a man, He first calls you to Himself. Then he now calls you to go. He first calls you to come. Then later he calls you to go. You first come first. Then you now go. What do I mean by you first come? Like you first come to him. He first calls you to himself. That is, he calls you to first be his friend. He calls you to first be intimate with him. He calls you to first know him. First come and know me. Before you go out for me. So you will do this thing the way I want you to do it. So when I instruct you, you will not be arguing with me. It comes from a lack of understanding. When God is giving an instruction as someone in ministry and you are saying, But God, you know now, why can't we? Why is it not like this? Huh? You know. A place of a lack of understanding. It's from a lack of understanding. God first called you to himself. He says, Come. First come and know me. First, come and be intimate with me, and from that intimacy, we flow that ministry on Instagram. I did an Instagram live of like how I found my purpose and everything. It started with my relationship with God. I didn't wake up one day and dream to be a YouTuber. So, 
you, you know that you wake up one day and dream up to be a podcaster and 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 a, a pastor or something it's something that god puts in your heart but the issue is that the people that the people that god has actually called some people that god has actually called they don't want to accept the call they don't want to accept the call they're just lazy in the fact that god i just want to know you i just want to worship you i don't want to go out there let me just know you here in my small corner you know let me just know you here that's actually cowardly because if you actually know god you will know that he needs a man to accomplish his mission here on earth there are three sides to god god is sovereign number one number two he's visionary Number three, he's steady. And in this case of purpose and calling, he's visionary. There's something he wants to do and he will stop at nothing until he accomplishes it. There is something he wants to get done and he will stop at nothing until that thing happens. Whether you agree or not. It's not about just come. I just want to just want to just feel the love of God. I just want to just I just want to just love on you. I just want to I just want to just stay in your presence. I just want to just you know God. I just want to be close to you and everything. You know God. All that mushy mushiness. Well, you know that that's not God's love language. God's love language is obedience. God don't listen to everything. Yeah, they oh Lord, I just love you. I just love you. Lord. I just love you, Lord. God be like, well, have you done what I told you to do? You need to like, open your eyes and say, eh, hey, well, God, I shall love you, shall. You know that I love you, but you know that I love you now. But you know that I love <laughs> God just looking at you. I don't know what you are saying. Some Christians, some believers don't want to go out. They just want to stay. But if you truly love God, you'll be willing to sacrifice your will. You'll be willing to sacrifice your will. The people that God has not like directly, directly called, but they want to be called. They don't want to come to a place of intimacy. They just want to just do the work. They just want to just, you know, just go out there. Then the people that are in the place of intimacy, so to say, don't now want to go out. Do you really know this God that you are saying you are in love with? Because if you really know him, you will know that he needs a man to accomplish his work here on earth. And that is why you are created. Ephesians 2 verse 10. You are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. To do good works. Which he has pre- before ordained that you should do. Message Bible puts it this way. Work you had better be doing. Because what else are you doing if you are not, doing the, if you're not fulfilling the reason why you are created? What else are you doing? Please, what are you doing? Is it school? Is it work? Is it business? What are you doing if you are not doing the thing that you are made for? You are just existing. You are not living. You're not pleasing the master because you're not pleasing the manufacturer because the manufacturer wants a product that will do what the manufacturer intended for it to do while the manufacturer was having sleepless nights making the product. He wants a product that will do. He wants a product that will perform. No one will be sitting there and kneeling down all day and praying from morning to night. No saying you should not pray. But step out. That's God's love language. That's how God really that you are serious about him. When you step out and do his work. Now the people that want to be called, first of all, it is not an assumption. It's not an assumption. But if you really want to be called by God, you study to show yourself approved. You, 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 you prepare yourself. And when God sees your heart to come, to show up. And one of the ways is sacrifice. Learning to sacrifice. Learning to sacrifice. Learning to sacrifice. And when you are now eventually called, don't now go there and be doing how you like. Don't now go there and be doing what you feel like. Let me read the scripture to you. I'm not going to explain it fully, but I'm sure it will mean something to you. Then you go home and meditate on it. And ask God to show you what it means. As a believer, as a person called by God. Isaiah chapter 56. And verse 10 to 12. I'm reading from NLT version. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds are blind and ignorant. They are not seen and they don't understand. They don't know. They don't, they're not walking in wisdom. They're like silent watchdogs. And this, this, this one now means that they are seen. 
but they are not saying. I think another version put it there are dogs that don't bark. They are dogs, they are made for defense, right? They are made for defense. But when they see if they will not bark, they will not say anything, they will keep quiet. They give no warning when danger comes. They don't to lie around sleeping and dreaming. AKA, the person that will sit and pray for money tonight and will not step out and do what God has asked them to do. AKA, the person that will just be praying and will just be, you know, God, I just want to love you. I just love you, Lord. Oh no, God, did you call me? God, wait first. I just want to love on you. They are ignorant shepherds following their own path and intent on personal gain. Come, they say, let's get some wine and have a party. Let's get drunk. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We'll do it again tomorrow. Then people are asking, Pekila, why are you so why are you shouting so much? Why is it so why are you why are you why, calm down now? You know, just reduce it small. So that I'll not be called a dog that doesn't know how to bark. Abby. Take this call seriously. We're not joking here. I said I said it last week or in my video on how to live your best life now. God is not joking with you. God is not God is not here to joke. I said he's a visionary God. Do you know who a visionary is? He sees something and he stops at nothing until it's accomplished. He's sovereign, meaning that that thing he wants to accomplish, he can choose anybody. So don't be sitting down there praying for money tonight and saying that. <sighs> I know someone will now come up with this scripture. Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. At the gifts of God are without repentance. You are chosen, you are chosen you. But God can choose the can change the person he chooses. You have the gift quite all right. It doesn't mean the gift leaves you. It doesn't, give the, it doesn't mean the gift of speaking has left you. It does not mean the gift of, 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 of leading people into the presence of God, the gift of worship on a higher dimension has left you. It does not mean it has left you. But the anointing can leave and be put on another person. Remember King Saul. It's not that God did not call King Saul. But the call kind of expired because it was not, it was his behavior was not doing how it was meant to be. In this journey, you sacrifice your will. You sacrifice your will. You might have planned your life and you might have, you know, just set everything out. God just comes and disrupts it. God just comes and dismantles it. Surrender your will. Just let it go. Just let it go. There was a point in my life how I planned God. I used to plan. But right now, I've even kind of reduced it because <laughs> I know my God. He will come and just you can all have inside that I did not expect. Surrender, sacrifice. Sacrifice. It might have seemed like I debated in this video and I did not really talk about sacrifice, but this is what the Lord wants us to hear. The people that have already been called. They don't want to step out. They don't want to step out. And they pray for money tonight. God, why is the body of Christ like this? When you are not taking your place in the body of Christ. Then the people that desire to be called, they don't want to take preparation before they, before they step out. Ah. <sighs> Pray that God grants us understanding in Jesus' name. Sacrifice your will, your mind, whatever you thought was, was great. Leave it. Because when God comes with his sovereignty, there is nothing made to do about it all. As a person called by God, be willing and ready to sacrifice. Be willing and ready to let things go. If he says drop this, drop that. You remember you're doing a program, a master's program, a PhD program. If he says drop it, stop it. If he says stop, stop. If he says no, no, take it like that. 
it comes from having the understanding that God loves me. Some people don't really understand that they don't really understand that God loves them and He has their best interest at heart. What are your best interests at heart? There's nothing that God will tell you to do that is not for your benefit. I mean, you're not helping God. You're not helping God. Because I say that God needs a man to do his work on earth. Does not mean that you should not go and sit down and balance on your chair and say that God needs me. God does not need you. God does not need you. God does not need you. You can you are easily you can be easily replaced. You can be easily replaced. Don't think you are irreplaceable because you are. You are very, very replaceable. That's why I try to make my point an election sure. That's why I try to make my coin an election sure. You have been called, don't go and sit down on the calling. Don't go and sit down on the instruction. Don't go and sit down on the vision. Step out. It is very important that you step out. It is very important that you, that you step out. I'm addressing the people that want God to call them. That feel that God is not looking at my side. God, you don't look me since morning. You never look my side since last year. I, I look my side now. Are you willing to be trained? Because God's training is not medical school. Though. I think medical school is hard. God's training is not school. God's training is not exams back to back. It's not like the way you think exams are back. You, you have exams. So, some exams you'll be having, you don't even know it's an exam. And you'll be missing it and doing it over and over again. Because in this kingdom, you don't move to the next class unless you have passed that exam. You must pass it. You don't pass it, you do it again. You do it again. That's why it looks as if your mates are moving ahead of you. You have not passed your own exam. And the question paper is not the same. That's why you should never compare yourself to the person beside you. The question paper is not the same. Stop wasting your time. Everything you want in this life, everything you are chasing, is on the other side of obedience. Because I know, I know you have passions and dreams. God just saying, just come and do this one first. Like, won't you just trust me and come here first? Just come. First of all, just come to me. Come to me. Come and be my friend. Come and know me. When you know me, your life will be better. Because the word of God in John 17 verse 3 said, that is eternal life. To know God. To know the only true God. That is eternal life. It's just in knowing first. Eternal life. To know God and His Son, Jesus Christ, in likewise manner, whom He has sent. I pray that God grants us understanding and open the, opens our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this is a very important topic. A man called by God. When the end times, Jesus is coming soon. The world is coming to an end. Would you want to leave this earth without fulfilling your purpose? Would you want to leave this earth without fulfilling the thing that God has, has, has destined you for? Is that what you want? So what exactly did you live for? If you don't fulfill your purpose, every other thing you did with your life is zero, counts as nothing. Because if you don't do the main thing that you were created for, then what have you done? All that thing you did was unnecessary. You just stressed yourself. Every other thing you did was unnecessary. Very, very, very unnecessary. It might be harsh, but you guys need to take it. It's unnecessary. Unnecessary, very unnecessary. Every other thing like that counts as zero or do. If you don't do the thing that he created you to do. So you better sacrifice your will. Sacrifice your emotions. And have that understanding that anything I drop and give to God. It has left my hand but it has not left my life. If I give God my time, I will get to a point. When. Is it, is it vacation I'm looking for? Is it time? You will have it. First come to him. No, learn of him. His yoke is easy. His body is light. First come to him, learn of him. Then go and do what he has asked you to do. 
then you see how you de decorate your life there was a point in my life when I was like, ah, God, you talk about future too much. Actually, you're not, you're not just poisoning our minds. I'm, you know that if you keep asking, telling us about our future is bright, can you, can you, can you come? I don't you think that people will just be coming to you just because of what they want their future to be like, not because of the dreams they have and the other things they want to do later. Because he doesn't mind. Because he himself is a very future-oriented God. He's a very future-oriented being. He's a very future. He's, a, he's visionary. If he wants to do something, he gets it done. He gets it done. He's also looking at the future the way he wants you to look at the future. God wants us to look at our future with so much enthusiasm. He wants us to look at our future with like, wow, the things that God has prepared for me. Eh? Let me just grow up first. Like, you know. <laughs> God is looking at the future that way because he has a plan. He had a master plan from the beginning. To draw men to himself. To establish his kingdom here on earth. That people accept Jesus Christ. And everything he has called you to do is get towards the kingdom of God. I talked about this in my video on significant soup success. Significant soup success. Everything he has called you to do is get towards the kingdom of God. Everything he has called you to do is to, is, is, is to bring is to, is to establish his kingdom here on earth. And do you know how it will be if you dedicate your life to what God has dedicated his own life to? Like, if you spend your whole time doing what God, like, is doing too. Because everything God is doing is to do or to draw all men to himself. Do you know how it will be if you, if, if you dedicate your life to the service of God in that area? There is nothing you lack again. Because... If I, if, if, I, if I have a servant, if I have a maid, they like, you know, I don't even need to tell the maid and say, the maid just does what I want. This one said, this, this related one said, I said in my video on self-love, on how to live your best life now as well. If you just does everything I want, you think I'll not be there for that servant? I'll treat the servant like my own. I won't even let the servant fall sick. I'll be like, ah, don't be sick so you can really continue to serve me. If you are sick, I'll say, ah, rest a while so that you can be stronger and continue to do what? Serve me. So you can be sure I'm going to do, do what I like, do what I want you to do, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sacrifice your will. Drop your will, drop your plans. Drop whatever you thought you were doing. Because some people say they're not even doing it, they're just chasing wind. Because if God did not bless that thing you are doing, you are wasting your time. Whatever you thought you were doing, because you think you are doing something, you might not, even, you might not have even been doing anything, really. You might not have even been doing anything, really. And honestly, eh, this thing will not be hard. This thing of follow your purpose, follow what God has called you to do, find out His plan for your life. Because people, people always like I have DMs every time asking me, how do I find my purpose? First find God. In God you find that purpose. In God you get to know you get to know you. You first get to know God, then you get to know you. My purpose came from a place of I just God, I just I want to, I want I want to, I want to know you. I was just serving God, having my relationship with God. I can judge a person. I was just there. And that's when I was called. Everything boils down to intimacy. Your level of intimacy with God determines the impact of your life. Your level of intimacy with God determines the impact of your life. Everything boils down to intimacy. Everything boils down to intimacy. When you are intimate with God, when you really come to the point of knowing God, when you have let God draw, draw you to himself, you know about the people that Bekila is begging and shouting. Tap into your purpose today. Tap into your purpose today. The kingdom of God is at hand. Go and do your own work on job. Drawing people to God. You know about the people I'm shouting at? <laughs> intimacy with God. I'll teach you on that soon. What does it really mean to be intimate with God? 
basic let me just tell you the basic thing stay in the word of god this bible stay in the word of god know what god is saying if you really know the heart of god like you claim to you will not be someone that's already been called and you'll still be sitting down there it's just the truth it's just the truth fully know the god you claim to know somebody is stepping out stepping into their purpose today somebody is standing up to go and begin the ministry work that god has laid in their heart is it fear that is holding you back after all your years of work with god you are still afraid afraid of what people what they will say what they will think God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I don't know which version puts it like this, but it was, it was, I think it was trying to imply that the message that if you if you don't have, if you're afraid, it means you're not okay. Like you're not mentally okay. <laughs> what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Fear brings torment. Fear brings torment. First of all, your guilt, the, the your, 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 your disobedience will torment you. It's not even God, your disobedience. Your disobedience has its own consequences. This is why God hates sin so much and does not want you to sin. It's so that it does, so that it's not hurts you. Because God knows what sin will do to you. God knows what sin will do to you. It's the consequence of your own disobedience that is tormenting you. Then the devil too will continue to torment you because he does not want you to step out into your purpose. To so torment from two sides. Why not break free and step into purpose? Okay. I've had this question a lot of times. But how do I find my purpose? How do I find my purpose? Stay in the word of God. It will start by God giving you instructions. Go and do this. Go and make go and help that person do something. Follow that person. Go, 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 to, go to this particular church. Learn under these particular people. Read this chapter of the Bible. Go and open a YouTube channel and talk about so and so. Go and start a podcast and say so and so. Go to that village and teach young children about Jesus. It starts by instructions. And as those instructions continue to build up, then... Don't need a lamb in your ear to tell you what your purpose is because it will make sense now. Everything will come together and you will know what you have been called to for such a time as like this. Some Christians are ignorant. Because if you know the kind of days we are in, you will not be seated and they will be begging you to go and help bring other people that don't know Christ into the kingdom. They will not be begging you. You will have to be begged. You will need to be begged. Like I said, you know about the people I'm shouting at. And please don't even see it as me shouting at you. I'm just a messenger of Christ doing what I've been called to do as well. Doing what I've been doing what I was instructed to do as well. I'm just doing what I was instructed to do as well. Because people have been asking me lately, what's my own? What's my own? It's my lord's business. My daddy's business. So it's my own. Mm? Praise God. Don't see it as me talking to you. See it as God talking to you. See it as God's voice through my voice today. How else we say it? How else we shout it? Obey God. All the love, God, I love you, you have been saying since you were born, means nothing. If you get to a point that God is asking for something you can't give, all the love you have been saying from when you were born, so when you give your life to Christ, means nothing. If you get to a point that God gives you an instruction and you start complaining and arguing and giving you one million and one reasons why you can't do it. It's because you have mouth. Hmm? Eleni. I 
I pray that God grants us understanding of these things. I pray that He opens our eyes to these things because it, it, it's not it's not more a joke in the body of Christ. The very people that are meant to be pulling other people from de- from hell and death are people joining them to indulge in the hell and death. You come back to your intimacy, your intimacy with God. If you are really intimate with God, you will know His heart. And you will know what is troubling him at this time. Because God also has concerns. God also has feelings. God also has worries about you. He's thinking about you day in, day out, second in, second out. He said he has engraved your name on the palm of his hands. My friend, God loves you. But do you love him? Do you love him? It's not by saying, I love you, Father. Lean down and pray from morning to night. When the thing he has told you to do, you have not done. That's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Don't blaspheme against the word of God. That's hypocrisy. God's love language, in case you don't know before, because people are just like, oh, just like the mushy mushiness. Oh, God, I just want to feel your presence. Oh, God, I just want to worship you. Oh, God, you know. La, 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 la. Hey, don't be shouting. What are you tonight? You think God told you to do? Have you done? <coughs> you think God told you to do? Have you done? Have you done? Have you stepped out? Have you stepped out? Have you stepped out? God loves you with a fiery love that can never be quenched. But do you love him? First of all, we cannot even understand the extent to which he loves us. We can't fully understand the depth, the breadth, the height. Nothing can separate us from God, that, that love of God. But do you, do you love him? If you love him, why are you not obeying? Why are you not stepping out? I need to find that scripture yourself. Where it says, Because you have rejected my, 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 because I rejected my word, because you have re- rejected my knowledge, because you have rejected my instructions, I will reject you as a priest. that God grants us understanding in Jesus name yes so everything I've said today is still about being called by God what has God called you to do what has he asked you to do that you have not done and if you are willing to be called by God if you are eager start preparing yourself because God is going to be recruiting people he has has chosen the the things that are not to confound the world the things that are foolish he has chosen to confound the wise. The things that don't make sense. He has chosen to confound the things that seemingly make sense. The low things over the high things. So nobody can boast. Let me find that scripture. I think 1 Corinthians. Whew. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are, they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them To bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in God's presence. It's not you. It's not you. They're expecting radical things in this season. Because God is ready to... You see God at work. But this is just my plea to you. 
so as not to incur the wrath of God. Step into your purpose today. Pray that God grants us understanding of His word in Jesus' name. I'm just a mouthpiece. I'm just I'm just a I'm just a servant. I'm just a messenger telling you the words of God in this season. God grant us understanding. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've come to, I've come to the end of this video, part three. A man called by God. This is the end of the video. A man called by God. Sacrifice. I don't really have touched touch, touch, touched much on sacrifice but it's just like surrender laying everything bare never get to a point in your life where god tells you to do something that you can't do never get to a point in your life where god asks you to drop something to lay down something and it's too big for you and you start complaining don't be in that category of people i see god helping us in jesus name so all the videos in this series beginning from self-love then how to live your best life now part one how to live your best life now part two now this part part one of a man called by god separation part two of a man called by god surrender now part three of a man called by god sacrifice ensure you watch all of them together and i see god helping you i see god granting you understand and open your eyes and please repent Repent if you know that God has called you and you are still sitting in your seat. Please stand up and get to work. And God grant you grace in Jesus' name. Amen.